This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Today, we're doing something that we need to do more often because the number one reason why most authors get into deep doo-doo with their books is because they fail to edit and they keep thinking oh my mom can read it my sister can read it my neighbor reads oh my old English school teacher can read it no 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 that is not editing so with we with me today we've got the amazing Barb Wilson she's the CEO of edit partner she's also I'm so tickled because she's going to be speaking at next year's author you extravaganza and she is going to be really talking about the right, the right way, right, the right way, and how we separate all the, the, the frogs, the princesses, the prince, and everyone to really let the cream rise to the, the, the top, which is what we want all of you as we listen in and learn along the way. So it's it's really a great time to be a writer. I mean, that's what Barb says, and that why every author needs an editor. So she's a professional editor. She has more than 30 years of experience in editing and writing, including six years as a contributing editor for a Great Lakes travel and destination magazine, and 25 years of corporate administrative and training development experience. So one of the great things is she really brings to the party hands-on, in the trenches. This is kind of the way you need to say it to connect with the, you know, the language and which way you're going to go, as well as her own special genre that she likes to work within. She's a freelance editor and an acquisition editor for several digital presses, in addition to numerous private sites. She's self-published a cookbook for mold allergy sufferers, um, which is now on a print called The Mold Free Gourmet. And her first fiction novel that she wrote herself, a contemporary romance, is coming out in uh, early 2016 for the Wild Rose Press. And where I connected with Barb, I was a speaker at the Las Vegas Writers Conference earlier this year, and she was too. And I immediately, what she was one of the, the workshops that I actually sat in, and I thought, oh, I need to bring her to the Author You group, but I also said she needs to be on the radio show. So with that, Barb, welcome to Author You, your guide to book publishing. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here, and it is a really exciting time to be a writer. Thank you so much. Um, well, you know, it is exciting. It is exciting to be a writer, so I have to ask you this that you've been around for basically three decades, like me. We're, you know, yeah. we're kind of old old hats out here. I, I say we are a member of the OBC, the Old Broads Club. So yeah. we've been out here for a while. We've seen, I've certainly seen a lot of changes just in publishing, but I'll tell you, my experience of what goes on in editing has dramatically changed too. Because when I first started publishing, which was with the traditional New York house, the editor really was not only who acquired you, was your advocate and um, really helped position you and really did a deep dive editing. My experience with authors who go the traditional route is that doesn't happen at all now. No, you know, what are no you you're seeing? exactly right. Um, in, in some cases, in some of the houses I work for, I have uh, the ability to be an acquiring editor, and I will build a slate of authors that I work with. And in some houses that I work for, I don't have that ability. I am handed a piece of work, and I'm told to edit it. So I, I may never even meet or talk to that author except via email. And... Uh, I, I remember, as you said, the OBC back in the day, 
uh, when I first uh, when I shot my first manuscript around, uh, I found it very difficult. I was looking at New York houses to try to uh, work with, and the answer I got across the board is you need an agent. And so I had to back up several steps before I even got started. And, of course, you know as well as I do, it's no longer that way today. Agents were needed to pitch your manuscript because publishers didn't accept unagented work. So before you even got to the publisher part, you had to back up and find an agent who saw promise in you. And there, as you know, with all careers, there were a few bad apples in that bunch, so everybody's heard the horror stories. And a lot of the more famous authors do have agents. And their books are likely to be published by the big five, complete with the big author advances, lots of publicity, standalone displays in bookstores, Mm -hmm. New York Times bestseller placement, hefty purchase prices. Uh, I'm talking James Patterson, Nora Roberts. Um, I'm doing you talking for Nora, but you can't really see it through the phone there. Um, (laughs) One of my personal favorites. Uh, John Grisham, Stephen King, the, the big people. But I will come full circle and I will say things are so different now because digital publishing and the ability to self-publish a manuscript are two huge things that have changed the face of publishing. Now you which said, is, you to, yeah, which is to me is a good thing. Um, I mean, it, also it has bad news to it. Every you know, there's always a yin and a yang to stuff. But to to me, there are too many books out there that are trash. And should not be allowed out of the gate. But because you can do it yourself, you know, I, I always say to a lot of authors, you know, you know, who they, they say that over 80% of the population feels they have a book in them. And my response is, yes, that could be, but should it be allowed out? And yes. so... <laughs> yeah. And in many cases, these are the same individuals who share the book with their beta readers which uh, their beta reading circle may be their daughter-in-law and the lady at the uh, hairdressers who reads romances all the time and maybe even their neighbor who's an English teacher. And because these people are personal friends, they're not going to give you negative feedback that you might really truly need to hear. And well, and they love you. You know, they, they're they your yeah. pals and they love you. And so... Um, they are the worst focus group you can imagine. Is, is they're my a other very thing. biased focus group <laughs> because they're not, you, as you said, they love you. They're not going to shatter your dream. They, you may have shared with them, "This is my dream. I want to be published, and I'm, I'm going to self-publish my book." Well, that's great, but it may need some work before it gets there. And, 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 you know, that's that's my challenge is that they don't see it. You know, it's they don't see that they need work um, and, that, and, and the depth also. There's the huge depth of what it might require to get it out there, whether you go from a, a full-blown ghost write that, you know, my God, just step away and just tell me your idea and I'll rewrite it to, you know, all the different other stages of writing, which, of, of editing writing that comes into play and I think that that's really a critical component that authors have have to get it's and the other thing is my experience is they think okay one they just need one editing and that's it Um, and they're done and to me that I I kind of we almost tell all our authors you're going to have kind of a, a minimum of two probably three passes before we're really ready to let you go no what's your take there Absolutely. Uh, And you're looking at, I say you, I mean me as a professional editor, I'm looking for different things with each pass. Uh, I do developmental editing. Um, In a couple books, I've actually stepped in and done the heavy lifting when I have seen that the author is is clearly over their head when they say things like, uh, well, what does POV mean? When I write them and say, your, your POV needs work here, you've got some head hopping, well, what does that mean? And I've stepped in and worked with them, and I, it's not my favorite thing to do, but if I'm contracted to do a job, I will definitely deliver. That's, 
I, you know I, what? I, I would love for you to get into some of the jargon. I, I think that would be oh. great. I'd love to get you into some of the jargon. What is it? Um, and from POD, et cetera, because we're not always talking print on demand here. And that in POV, your point of view, et cetera. And then secondly, I'd love to get into some of the cost variables here when we come right sure. back. So with me is Barb Wilson. She is a phenomenal editor. I'm honored to be bringing her to author you uh, the extravaganza next September, and you should be coming too. But we'll get into that much later. This is Judith Bryles. It's author you, your guide to book publishing. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 866 3226. 1106 Design. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author You's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author You is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author You today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author You on Twitter at Author You and on Facebook at Author You, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author You, where the author goes to become seriously successful. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, we're talking editing and some of the jargon that is commonly used. Barb Wilson is with us. She is a partner and a freelance editor herself, but she is with Edit Edits Partners. Did I say that right, Barb? Edit, Plural, edits.partner.com. Edit, yes. Great. All right, edits with a plural, partner.com. No, no, edit, singular. Sorry. Yep. yep. <laughs> Edits is edits plural and partner is singular or other way around? Both singular. Both singulars. Editpartner.com. All right. So yep. 
We're talking about the variations of the jargon and what to expect when you think you're expecting. I guess maybe we'll throw it out that way. So let's start with some of the jargon that, that will be commonly used that an editor might use in communicating with an author. Okay, um, let's start with POV, point of view. Um, authors write generally each chapter or a portion of a chapter from the point of view of a particular character. There is first-person POV, first-person point of view, and those books are, are written in the style of uh, the Twilight series comes to mind. Um, some of the uh, the other more popular books, I would say, in the, the young adult genre are now mm -hmm. being written in first-person point of view, first-person present tense. I, I picked this up, or I pick up the, instead of she picked up the. So you have a, a different verb tense that's used. You have a different... Uh, style of writing. I find it very hard to get into books like that. It's not my personal favorite. I'm a big fan of the old um, third person past tense. Mm -hmm. Third person point of view. Um, she ran out the door. So the verbs are going to be in past tense and we use pronouns or character names. Um, the, the point of view, the person who's telling the story, the reader generally has that story handed to them a chapter or a section at a time from the same person. The same character is telling the thoughts, telling what's happening to them, what they're seeing, what they're feeling, what they're, they're sensing around them. And when an author starts combining different characters in the same chapter and what they're seeing and feeling, it becomes confusing for the reader. Mm -hmm. And that is really difficult. You, you have to almost unwind the story. I have a, a client I'm working with right now who's actually doing that. I sent back a manuscript that took me about a week to actually work my way through. Um, unfortunately, it was at a level I almost had to decode it because it was so deeply enmeshed with these characters, and I had several notations, who is saying this? Which character is speaking here? Because I, I truly didn't understand. And I know from being a voracious reader, if I pick up a book like that, uh, I probably will put it down just as fast as I picked it up. If it starts confusing me instead of entertaining me or enthralling me or uh, I'm not enjoying reading it because I have to think about it too much, I'm probably not going to finish the book, and I'm probably not going to buy anything else by that author. So, Barb, there's always different types of editing. I know that when I'm working with clients, um, I always think of at least three. So what do you look at? And when you're looking at it as if you've got a manuscript that comes in raw, what's the first thing that you're going to do with, with the eyes to the paper? Okay, the, the first thing I'm going to do, and this is, of course, after with a private client, this is going to be uh, raw. I've never seen it. It's, it's a new client. It's someone that I'm not familiar with mm -hmm. their writing. Yep. I'm going to read the entire manuscript through, and I'm going to look for things like story flow, characterizations, physical appearances, story details, timelines, point of view, plot, pacing, I want to look at the story arcs. I want to see if the story moves along or if it sort of jerks and pulls. Mm -hmm. um, if there are mechanical issues around punctuation and formatting and story structure, things like that, I'll look at that in a later round. Right now, I'm building the foundation of the story, and I will work with the author to get that straight first. Um, if we have some issues, um, I, for example, I once had a gentleman who changed names on his characters halfway through the story, and I couldn't figure out who these new people were that were popping up, mm -hmm. but it was the same characters. Uh, they just changed names. Um, I will look at the big pieces. I will make sure the big pieces are correct. I will look at the pacing and make sure that is correct. If there is some work in that area, 
we'll catch that on the first round. And I'll look for things like continuity as well. We don't want a character eating a tuna sandwich on page 29 and a chicken sandwich on page 31. We don't want them getting out of the car twice or opening the door three times or pouring coffee four times. We want them to do something once and then move on because that's how life lives. You know, we're not caught in that loop like on Pleasantville. Um, we fix the big stuff on the first round, and the first round is going to be the hardest, it's going to be the longest, and it's going to take the most time. And that if we're likely to have conflict, if there's going to be any conflict about the direction of the book, that's where it'll occur. The second round is going to be more things like uh, point of view, softer things. Uh, to make sure we're not driving a black car for the first four chapters and it suddenly changes to a blue car in the last six chapters. Um, making sure things fit, making sure all the details are correct. It's almost like building something. Uh, if there's pacing issues, if they have an action scene, I want the pacing to be fast and quick. I want the reader to feel that pacing in their heart and in their stomach as they're reading it. It almost makes their, their breath get tight. Uh, if there's a love scene, I want it to be languorous and sexy and sort of make their breath catch. I don't want that to be reversed to where we have a car chase that's trying to be languorous and sexy and a love scene that's trying to be short and choppy. Uh, it won't work. Um, well, it might, depending on some of the books I've read, but hey, uh, those are different books. And it's called Author Style. And on the, the third round, mm -hmm. it's getting down into things like sentence structure and punctuation and formatting and making sure verb tenses are, are uniform. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do follow the principle of Chekhov's gun. There's no need to write about a gun if the story doesn't have one. So let's be clean and pare our stories down and, and put the essentials in our stories that the readers need to know. Um, most of the stories that I edit are between 50 and 100,000 words. I have edited some that are longer, but I haven't yet had a client give me a 1,000-page book and tell me he wants everything left in there. I know some of the books published uh, through authors and, and self-pubs are very long, and unfortunately, I've seen self-pubbed books where the author decides to publish their own book, and if they're not working with an editor, they may not be able to bear the thought of cutting or paring down things that aren't needed in that manuscript, and it may cost some readers. Have you had that experience, Judith? Yes, and they'll be lucky if they can sell a couple of books. With that, we're going to be right back, and that we're going to be digging more into editing, plus a whole bunch of other areas, like predators and editors, as well as some of the other organizations that you should know about for your specific genre. With me is Barb Wilson. This is Judith Bryles, and it's Author You, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. 
They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. We're talking about editing, lots of things to go on with this as we have this today. And it's it's really critical. And one of the things that Barb Wilson, who is our expert editor and has done a lot of books, some of those that don't want to have anything going on, um, they don't want an editor to put their mitts on it, which is always a disaster. I have never seen it when it hasn't come through that an editor hasn't fixed it. Because I believe that one of the jobs for an editor is to make the author's writing look better and make you shine. Um, but I also say I think it's important that an, that an editor doesn't all of a sudden decide that it's their book and all of a sudden the author can disappear, which I've also seen. And Barb, I bet you you have too. Is that right? Absolutely. Um, what I tell my clients is you mind the gemstone. This is your idea. This is your book. Uh, you own the rights to it. Uh, you're going to reap the benefits when you sell it. Yep. Uh, but my job is to cut it and set it for you. Your gemstone yes. will look so much prettier if it's not a rock on the ground. Yes. Let me help you make it shine. Exactly. And we have, um, I have some clients that are absolute diehards, uh, and they will come back and say, I've got this idea, and I need you to help me develop it. And the, those are long-term clients. I've had them for years, and they're, they trust me because they know what I can do, and that's wonderful. Um, I, I'm flattered as an editor when they give me that trust. But mm -hmm. there is mm -hmm. trust. And as you said, Judith, it's, you've seen an editor step in and take over a book. And mm -hmm. that's not my mm -hmm. role. I'm, I'm very open about that. My contract even says, this is your book. This is not my book. I, I have no right to it. So I want that very clear from the start. My job is to help the writer. And since I wear two hats, I am a writer as well. I have my first book. Uh, fiction book coming out next year, I understand how someone can get so deep in developing a plot or having a conversation or relating an incident that everything else just sort of goes out the window. But it's given me a unique perspective about what my authors go through when they bring their book to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, it, I do it, get it, the it, English teacher rationalization quite often, though. Um, oh, me too. Or, or here's the other one. It's not just the English teacher. I have a good friend who's a university or, uh, you know, a college professor, and that's when I start groaning because there is, <laughs> there is such a huge difference between academia, uh, anything academia. I mean, I would take the fourth grade English teacher 
any day over the academic in, from the university level. That's just my personal experience. Uh, um, and mine as well. And thank you. Uh, yeah. I, uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, when, when we get a book, I have to tell you this, when we get a book that comes in that has the author has a legal background or they're academic, it, it is really going to be, um, the editing almost takes twice as long to fix it because they don't know how to write. No, and, or they write in a particular style. Yeah, they, they write, they, don't, they can't write for the masses. They are writing for their own niche. And they don't understand that the mashes don't have a, a, a medical, medical is another issue, that, that medical background or that technical background or that legal background or that academic. And it's like, God, it's boring, mostly. And it, it's, uh, I want, I hate to use the word drone on, but quite often that's, that's what I encounter. And I'll go in and say, this has to be cut. This is, this is too wordy. This is too long. You've, you've lost your reader back up here at the top of the page, and three pages later, you're still expositing. You know, we're not Anne Rand here, <laughs> and we're not going for, you know, the four-hour radio speech. We're going for sound bites because the world mm-hmm. reads differently these days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, if, you, if you're determined to have your English teacher or your neighbor or your friend who knows so much about books, read this for you, fine, but I have an acid test for you to use when you talk to them about doing this for you. Ask them about their familiarity with the Chicago Manual of Style. And the second test is ask them what their opinion is on the debate between the serial comma and the Oxford comma. And if they give you a blank look on either of those questions, call me back. We'll talk. Mm -hmm. And the editors are nice yeah. people. I'm not saying I'm I'm I mean. I'm saying I know my job, and my job is to help authors. Right, and may, and again, I help you and make you look better. I mean, I just oh, so absolutely. so believe that in that. Um, you you and I share some common things where we get into predators. It's been a long time since I've talked about predators and some of the things. And we and you've seen your share of contracts. That have come oh, out, yeah, um, and some really bad ones um, on that. And I, I know a new book that I'm currently working on, which is called "How to Avoid Book Publishing Blunders, Bloopers, and Boo Boos," and I was writing up some tips relating to contracts and things to work with. And since you've been around, you know, which is about as long as I have in the publishing arena, that there are a lot of clauses that used to be included in contracts that are no longer there. And yes. excluded, um, and and maybe you're you know you can pop up some a couple because I think this would be good from you know an old timer perspective and what to do from, um, and bring them back. Although you know this is not a legal show per se, but one of them really was the whole reversions of rights, and also as an editor, I think that when you take back something or maybe you've published something with a publisher. You know, what can they do in your experience, Barb, um, that they can take some of their own work and manipulate it and run with it? What do you suggest in this arena? Um, uh, The first thing that I will say is uh, an ounce of prevention is a pound of cure. And I would find an attorney. Um, There are some excellent ones that I know that uh, I met at the same conference we attended, Judith. And uh, I would find one that specializes in literary contracts. They are out there. Lawyers these days are like surgeons. They have different specialties. And uh, because the literary genre and literary uh, contracts have changed so much in the last couple decades, I would find a lawyer who has stayed current in that genre and, and the things that are moving in that genre and I would get their advice on what you're being asked to sign. Your, your concerns don't stop. They should begin when you're handed a contract from a publisher because your job as an author is to protect yourself and to protect your rights. And mm-hmm. if you're not a well-versed literary author, 
you need to be aware of your rights, and if you aren't on top of that, you need to find someone who can help you. Um, I will also say that some publishers are very stringent about their contracts, and if you ask for alterations, your contract offer may be rescinded. I've seen that happen as well, and it's always disappointing when it happens, but it does. <clears throat> I have also seen um, one thing that we haven't touched on in this conversation is media rights. Ah, let's and, talk about and, media rights. Yeah, yeah. Do you agree that uh, that was, I mean, the, it's starting at the beginning, your, your initial point about um, reversion of rights, there are contracts out there that were evergreen where the rights never reverted. And they were the publishers. Once you signed them over to the publisher, you no longer own them ever, ever, ever on end. And now they're starting to revert. I've seen two to five years as the current term. I also am seeing media rights because quite often something will be made into a, a mini series or a show mm -hmm. for Showtime, or even mm -hmm. I, I have one author I'm working with at the History Channel is interested in some things that she's doing based around uh, popularity of Boardwalk Empire, and she's writing some stories about prohibition. So she's mm -hmm. being very cautious about her rights, and she's protecting them, so she's protected, and it's a very wise thing to do. Well, I think that you have to do, I think you've got to make sure, because when, when I was uh, publishing with the, with the big boys, there was always a reversion of rights clause, actually, in my contracts, always. And basically, it dealt with the print book and out of print. Um, and, you know, there was movie rights. If they, they, you know, they had certain things that were evergreen. But other than that, the electronic rights didn't exist during that time. And what's happened with the digital publishing, and I think that's one of the biggest things that all authors have got to be really tuned into if they go down that traditional route or if they decide to sign up with a company that calls themselves a publishing company and they really aren't as as the true feature of what Barb and I are familiar with. They are really a pay-to-publish operation. And you have to really know what in the heck you're getting into before you sign anything. And that's why I'm going to go back to what Barb said. Before you sign any contract like that, I would have someone, an attorney who is a specialist in intellectual property, look that over. It pays to, for an hour to two hours of their time to know what you're getting into or making suggestions for what you need to X out or alter. I, I just would highly recommend that. Um, the, the other side of that, though, is on the reversions is what I would always put into a contract is that that you have the right to put the clause in, put it back in, that you as the author have the right to revert, um, the, the terminate and revert it back to you if an X amount of books haven't been sold in print during the year's period of time because the problem with print on demand is they can print up a book anytime they want which they all have that parallel track that they do now and so they could keep your book in life for perpetuity literally and and you're stuck so that's yeah. why I yeah I think it's really important to figure out what can you pull away and what you've done, and I know that I many times that I've had to say, you know, I've already published some of this stuff. You know, where I'm pulling this from a book that's out of print. I actually have the rights to it. I'm going to share this with you, but I'm not giving it away for the rest of my life. Because, and the other thing is, if if any of you who are listening in are writing books that have ever changing items in it, whether it's a financial book or a technology book. I mean, I'm not talking about the fiction side. That's a little bit different. But if you're in nonfiction, with there is changing things in there by definition if you're going to keep publishing in that arena you're going to have to come back and change the book to keep it live it's crazy to not have to be able to use some of your material and bring it over so get it out in front before you get into deep doo-doo i think that's what barb and i are both saying is that correct absolutely absolutely All right. okay we're, we're, we're going to come right back and i want barb to get into some of the costs of editing and for the different types of editing. And Barb, if you're familiar with Ghost, I'd love to have you kiss on that too. And Ghosting. Sure. And then then lastly, I would love to get into some of the resources we can refer authors to so they can deep dive and get more material outside of what we're talking about today. This is Judith Bryles. My guest is Barb Wilson. She is a partner in editpartner.com and has been editing for 30 years plus. We'll be right back. 
This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems, you want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd if you want to create a book with no regrets. Give her a call today, 303 885-2207. That's 303-885-2207. Or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at MyBookShepherd and on Facebook at TheBookShepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book. If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. It's author you, your guide to book publishing. With me is Barb Wilson, and we're talking about all things relating to editing and actually writing, both fiction and nonfiction. And Barb was talking about some of the variations with um, what editing is, different rounds of what she looks for at an editor, and how um, authors can keep out of trouble. And uh, as we went to the break, I said I wanted to come back and really kiss on some of the costs because Barb, what my experience is, is a lot of authors don't get what real editing costs. And somehow they seem to think that when a manuscript comes in and you're looking over and reading through it, that's free time. And I've always said, where did you get that idea? (laughs) Where did you get that idea? So would you jump into some of the costs of editing for us? Sure. Uh, I'll use myself as an example. And I do have uh, two other friends that are professional editors. We do freelance clients as well, and we work for digital presses, and we're also authors. So uh, I'll tell you up front, we pay editors. When we're authoring and we're self-publishing, we pay editors. So we understand it's not that we're trying to rip you off. We have the same costs going in when we self-publish our book. Um, My website is editpartner.com. And I would refer people out there and take a look. I describe the different types of editing that I do. Uh, I do developmental content editing, and that is a sent a word. So 
So say, for instance, you have a 50,000-word manuscript, that's going to cost you $500. And we will sign a contract where both of us are protected. Um, I will do the work for you. You owe me half up front. That's pretty much standard as well. And then I, when we are completed with the editing and I have given you back the finished book, you owe me the rest of the money. Um, I will set up payments on example of I'm working with a client right now who is going to um, break her payment into four parts because that is what works for her. She's a repeat client. Fine. Mm -hmm. um, that's a personal issue between the editor and the author. But you never know as an author unless you ask. And if there is something mm -hmm. that you need to do that accommodates you personally, I would encourage you to go talk to your editor about it. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm doing simply line editing or reviewing, I have a client right now that has four stories that she wants what she calls brought current. We touched on that before. She's got older stories that are out. She wants to reissue them. And there are some stories that need to be updated. Uh, for instance, I don't think they have cell phones in them and things like that. She wants mm -hmm. some freshness. So that's going to be a different rate. That's probably going to be about a half cent a word. Um, if I have recurring clients um, that bring me a, a large volume of work, I may negotiate a special rate with them, and I'm sure all editors do the same thing. Uh, if I have clients that are referred to me from another client, I may offer a discount. For instance, anyone that, that comes to me through Judith's organization, Author University, Author U, um, because I'm an associate member there, I have offered a 10% discount on any editing that comes to me through that organization. Um, my rates that I offer are standard. Um, I've checked that. I keep an eye on what my competition charges. And I would encourage people considering hiring an editor to go out to the Editorial Freelance Association website, which is www.the-efa.org. And that will give you ballpark rates for services and writers, indexers, proofreaders, and editors, even desktop publishers. So desktop publishing can have a cost associated with it if you're doing a print-on-demand or a vanity press mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you to go and look and see what is out there. Um, several editors that I know charge per hour. And that would be anywhere from $25 to $50 an hour, depending on how many hours they take with your book. I think that um, it, it's a personal preference, whether they charge per hour or whether they charge per word. I've chosen to charge per word. And however hours it, how many hours it takes me, that's fine. Um, but I would encourage you again to go look at the CFA website, and you can Google that and find it. And uh, Judith and I briefly touched on... Uh, that there are some bad apples in this bunch. <laughs> there's huge, there's a lot, and you know. Who you're working with. Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, Predators and Editors and Pierce Anthony's site are two things that you can go and look at. <clears throat> Again, you can Google Predators and Editors, and that site will list everything from publishers to cover artists to editors. And if there have been people that have either praised them or complained about their services, they'll be listed there. He's a very good source. Pierce Anthony is the same thing, and Pierce is spelled P-I-E-R-S. So Google Pierce Anthony, and his site will come up as well. Same thing, it's alphabetical order. And uh, it will give you some ideas about who to consult and who are some choices and who to stay away from. Um, if you're writing romance at all, uh, the Romance Writers Association, uh, Romance Writers of America, uh, you can Google that, and that will give you some wonderful advice in the romance genre. And it has a lot of helpful resources, a lot of articles, a lot of good advice for the beginning romance writer. And, of course, Judith owns AuthorU.org has a list of service providers that cover almost all aspects of publishing, editing, and writing. Well, you know, I should say, I don't own it. <clears throat> I founded it. It's really a nonprofit that is a membership organization. So it's really owned by the members. 
I don't own it. <laughs> but Yes, but Judas, you police it, and if there are bad people, you kick them out. Oh, that you know that's actually right. If if I find that um, uh, there is a we have a really strong ethics standard, sta- standard, but if I find that there is a a publishing provider, I mean I will ban them, which I've have banned a couple, because it, you mean you don't need that kind of stuff. And I think it's really important for people to shout out who the bad apples are, and and let them know. So I'm going to say when you are googling people. Um, where you Bing it, Google it, Yahoo it, I don't care where you're doing your search. But it's really important to put in the name of the provider that you're thinking of dealing with or the name of the company. And you follow it. Besides going to the sites that, that Barb has recommended, Predators and Editors, which I've recommended for years, and the Piers Anthony site, is that and uh, th- that what's really important is to put after their name complaint, lawsuit, problems, um, uh, uh, rip-offs, <laughs> you know, things like yeah. that. Scams. Uh, and then, that money yeah. never got booked, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. It's, uh, it's crazy. And it's yeah. almost and the truth. It's like uh, virus writers now. If, if someone yes. finds a way to do something, there's going to be people following behind it, finding a way to somehow corrupt the system to make money out of it at the expense of other people. There's no and question. To me, because and, I've always wanted to be a writer, writing is a dream. Um, it's a dream come true for a lot of people. And I'm, I'm here as a tool to help them get their dreams to come true. Yes. And, and let me just say the other thing is that when you're doing your searches about anything, anybody, that 90% of the general public only looks at the first page, do not stop there. You need to deep dive, and you go back multiple pages, especially when you're looking for problems and complaints and rip-offs and lawsuits and concerns or anything else, and scam, which is the other good word, as Barb Absolutely. said. Absolutely. Yeah, because that these people know how to pile on other uh, blogs, other articles, other information that will push the negative stuff down. Now, I need to also say that, you know, not everyone loves everybody. Let, let's face that. Not everyone loves everyone. Not everyone's going to be a fit. I'm sure Barb's had clients that she would think, oh, my God, never call me again. I have had, you know, people just say, if you just leave me and, you know, you do not pay. Get out of here. <laughs> Because, because they won't listen, they won't pay attention, they don't get what it is that they need to do. And, and I've had people who say, you know, I'm just not willing to work to make this work. And I said, you know what, I'm not willing to work with you because my goal is to make you have a successful book. And if that's not your goal, we're on the same goal, but, you know, we're not working together here. Yeah, and so, people's behavior is noticed. You know, yes. and word gets around. I'm not saying there's an official naughty author list, mm-hmm. but if you don't think people exchange information over glasses of wine at conferences, which there oh, are yes. lots and lots all year long, that would be a fantasy because they do. Everybody talks about, you know, the one author that was refusing to work uh, with them or refusing to listen to suggestion or refusing to take advice that would make their story better. Um, you know, we all have horror stories, and we're not shy about sharing them. No, and there's, and also I think that, you know, our authors who are listening in, they need to really do a reality check, a come-to-book discussion with themselves and really decide are you know are you a good writer i mean can 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 you fine tune can you learn or do you really need some professional help as in someone who is going to ghost write for you which will can cost a really pretty penny um, oh really pretty penny like numbers with comments like, oh, oh yes like two oh yes numbers and then the comma <laughs> uh, yeah digits we're talking digits here um, digits, and, digits and commas uh, yes, and also, you know, heavy-duty content editing, developmental editing will get into commas and digits, too, Yeah, um, and double digits. So I think you need to do it. I mean, I know I had what we called the book from hell um, with an attorney that we were working with, and it turned out he had three people in his office put it together. No one communicated. It was just a disaster. And I basically had to do a rewrite, a phenomenal rewrite, that um, they were never willing to pay for, yet they expected the work to be done. 
So I think you need to have that reality check. What is it? What's your commitment? What's your energy? What's your money that you're going to support it to make the book that you really want? And if you're not willing to do that, you need to back away and find an alternative way to come out here. Take up knitting. <laughs> okay, so with that, I think we'll do a wrap up here. <laughs> To take out knitting and gardening or maybe making soup. So with that, um, we, we have Barb Wilson with us. And editing is really important. It's a critical ingredient. It is one of the seven deadly sins of book failure on my list. And you need to have it. Every author I know of, from Stephen King down, has editors. If you're better than Stephen King, which I bet you're not, you need an editor. And with that, Barb Wilson, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, Judith, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. And I look forward to uh, joining in the merriment at the Author You Extravaganza in September 2016. That's right. It's the 15th to 17th. Information will be going up on the authoru.org website. Have a good week, everyone. Happy writing and certainly publishing. This is Judith Bryles. We'll see you next week. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week, a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take you, the author, to the next level. You'll learn tips and secrets on how to create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve book publishing success by making one very simple change in your book's journey. How to avoid the publishing predators. How to create an author and book platform that rocks. Learn how to make a living with your words and your books. Learn how to publish a book that has no regrets and so much more. For more information, check out AuthorU.org, where authors who want to be seriously successful go. And Judith's website, TheBookShepherd.com. Then join us again here next week for more. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Brought to you by Author You and the Book Shepherd. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific on the Rockstar Radio Network.